Again, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to start our city council meeting. If everyone would find a seat. Thank you. We're here tonight at 790 Homestead Boulevard, Homestead, Florida, 33030. It is now 625 in the evening. Uh, this evening, uh, Elder uh, Chauncey Brown, pastor of William Chapel Free Will Baptist Church, will be given the invocation. Pledge of Allegiance will be by our police explorers and Councilwoman Eric Bach McCormick. Please rise. With our heads bowed, most gracious Lord, we come to this, you at this time to thank you for your graciousness, thank you for your kindness, and thank you for your guidance. As we begin this meeting, we pray, God, now that you would come and invoke your presence in this place. Touch the minds, the hearts, and the desires of these, your people, that all decisions are made are made and rendered in the best intent for all those who are in Homestead, Florida. We pray now for the guidance and for the leadership of those, our city officials. We ask now that you continue to guide their minds, their hearts, and their spirits, that everything that we do, we do well according to your will. It is in your precious name that we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much, Pastor Brown. We appreciate you giving that invocation and welcome to the great city of Homestead, sir. <coughs> Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick. Here. Councilman Maldonado. Here. Councilman Shelley. Here. Councilwoman Wilman. Here. Councilman Williams. Vice Mayor Burgess. Absent. Mayor Bateman. Here. I'm gonna Okay, uh, this time we're going to open public comment. We're going to keep it to uh, hopefully uh, two to three minutes, no more. Um, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is John Alger, 17971 Southwest 284 Street, Homestead, Florida, 33030. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about the uh, uh, settlement with the uh, Air Force Base and uh, I'm pleased to announce that my family has come to an agreement with the, uh, uh, the, the, the base pending uh, council approval that uh, is going to solve everybody's problems, all, ours, theirs, all in between. And I want to thank everybody for uh, their hard work and the, the tough times that you guys have had to uh, experience. And like I said, it's still pending, but uh, for, in our book, it's, it's done. Thank so, you. Thank that's, you. That's great news. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I just, my name is Yvonne Knowles. I'm the chair of the Homestead Centennial Committee under the guidance of our liaison from Council, Councilwoman Patricia Faircloth, Patricia Faircloth McCormick, pardon me. Uh, real quickly, I, don't, I know it's, been, it's going to be a long evening and I don't want to take your time too long, but I do want to let the public know that our Homestead Centennial Celebration, which is the big centennial birthday party, is this February the 2nd, Saturday, starting at 2 o'clock and going until 10 o'clock. We have a band, we're putting a large stage up inside the Homestead Arena. Thank you, Homestead Rodeo Association, for letting us do that. We're going to have a historical play set up in the pavilion. 
It's going to be a day full of wonderful excitement. And at 7 o'clock, we're going to have the big birthday cake celebration. Mayor and council will be there. And we really hope that the community will come out and enjoy this free event that is designed to celebrate Homestead's 100 years. 2013 is the centennial of Homestead, and we want everybody to come out and have a lovely time and enjoy a day in the Harris Field Pavilion with your community. Thank you so much, and look forward to seeing you all down there at the Harris Field Pavilion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'd like the record to reflect that I am present. For Thank, you, Thank you, sir. Record reflects Mr. Williams. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ramon Ferrer, I'm area manager for Florida Power Light Company. Very proud to serve this community for many years. I'm here today to thank this mayor and this council for their continued support on our uh, expansion to expansion of Turkey Point uh, with the project we call Turkey Point 6 and 7. Uh, particularly Mayor Bateman uh, last Thursday took time of, of his busy schedule to represent the city and follow up to your previous resolution and support and showed up at the uh, zoning meeting in front of the commission made a very passionate statement uh, about how important that project was uh, for the uh, citizens of Homestead from the economic development point of view, all the environmental benefits, all the um, economic benefits that it brought, and uh, thanks to him and many other members of the community that showed up and support, the commission approved the zoning application that we had, which was the last hurdle with Miami-Dade County that now allows us to move forward to the state uh, application, and uh, I want to thank the mayor and the council and the commission from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much for your support. We'll keep be coming back uh, to you as we have done all throughout this process to provide you with updates and details of where we are at each step of the process. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you for being such a, an outstanding community partner. Um, he, Ramon's being very modest because I'm telling you, there were some of the most professional speakers that I've ever heard speak, and about 16 of them that I counted before I left that spoke against, and six of us who spoke for. And we spoke loud enough that that county commission heard that Homestead, Florida City needed the jobs, and we needed the power, and we needed what they were offering. So that's, that's pretty overwhelming, uh, and, and I, I can tell you it was, it was a, a real big win. So thank you, FPNL. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, Councilpersons, um, I'm Alice Fields, and I'm here twofold. As a concerned citizen of Homestead Air Reserve Base as, and a concerned citizen of City of Homestead, I'd like to introduce Senior Master Sergeant Sylvia. He's the first sergeant of the active duty squadron that we stood up at Homestead Air Reserve Base. My concern here is we're driving our airmen out of the city of Homestead. Um, policies are in place for deposits, for utilities, water turn on. We've been successful with um, FPL in working out these deposits for our airmen. I'm going to let Senior Master Sergeant Sylvia explain what will happen to the airmen if they don't pay their bills and some of the stories of our airmen that have come into the community and just got in a wall when they went to turn on their power and their water with the city of Homestead and, and asking for the waiver. So I'm going to let him tell you the stories. Okay. And for the record, if you will, we've never met before, have we? Mayor, yes, we have. We have? Where yes. did we meet at? Um, on the base and at several other functions. We never had a conversation about this, did we? No, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Name and Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Senior Master Sergeant Gary Sylvia. I'm the first Sergeant to Detachment 2, 20th Operations Group here at Homestead. Um, quickly, I'll brief uh, just three quick topics. Number one, a little bit about our airmen. Number two, their experiences moving here from, from different places around the world. And number three, uh, a way ahead, things that I think we'd like to see change, as Ms. Fields mentioned. Uh, first off, our unit is to be comprised of 176 airmen. I have a list of folks here. We currently have 107 active duty airmen on station, uh, 50 of which are married. So that is 157 um, members of your community that have arrived here since May of last year. In addition, our inbound roster has uh, 69 new folks arriving uh, through the next 12 months or so. 
uh, and 31 of those are married. So that's about another 100 people moving to the community, adults. Children, of course, could add another number of folks, uh, as you all know. Now that includes uh, folks moving into the community, housing, schools, um, frequenting businesses, so economically, uh, definitely a boost to the city of Homestead. Um, now, having said that, as our airmen are moving in over the last eight months or so, some of the experiences they've, they've come across uh, to move into the communities has been as long as um, four weeks to get approval through the uh, homeowners associations in the different communities. Um, that in some cases still holds true, others have shortened it down to about five days. Uh, consider that our airmen arriving from any base in the U.S. or overseas uh, could spend as much as 30 days in a hotel, which can cost $100 or more a day. And then in addition, they're buying food for their families without a kitchen to cook and, and save a little bit of money. So the expense is astronomical. Um, the, the, uh, the Air Force offsets a little bit of that, but only for the first 10 days. After 10 days, then they're on their own and they're out of pocket. Um, secondly, with, with utilities, as Ms. Field mentions, mentioned, uh, Florida Power and Light, we do have a waiver process for my younger folks. I do have 20 airmen uh, right out of tech school. Uh, so they joined the Air Force in the last... 12 months or so, so they're brand new. A lot of them, uh, maybe 18 or 19 years old, have left mom and dad's house and come to us here. Um, we don't have dormitory space, nor do we have housing on base. So those folks are required to move off base as well as our married and older uh, uh, airmen. Uh, in doing so, Florida Power and Light generally would require a significant security deposit. However, the form I have uh, from them, I can fill out with my information. If any one of my members is delinquent in paying, then I get notified. And of course, I call them in my office, and I can assure you none want to come to my office and see the first sergeant for any reason, let alone being delinquent on a, on a, on a payment. And if I may say to our Uniform Code of Military Justice, of which all active duty members subscribe, there's an article uh, listed, Article 134, which entails debt dishonorably failing to pay. And associated with that, if one were to violate and not uh, pay just debts, the um, maximum punishment would be a bad conduct discharge, forfeiture of all pay and allowances, and confinement for up to six months. So these airmen will not fail to pay, they will pay. And it's my responsibility to make sure I am the conduit to uh, those airmen to pay those just debts. Now, I say all that, Florida Power and Light has been very uh, helpful. The waiver process is usually down to $100 for those folks with no or, or possibly poor credit. Um, City of Homestead Power, um, three of my airmen have charged them $386. Now, these are airmen fresh out of tech school. Their, their monthly pay could be anywhere between $1,500 and $1,800. Uh, bearing in mind, getting an apartment could cost them up to $3,000 for the initial cost in addition to the $386 deposit. So those are things um, I'll transition into a way ahead. I'd like to be able to reduce any upfront costs that my airmen incur, uh, be it through home associations. Um, they will pay a reasonable amount, which was expected. The first month's ran a security deposit. Let me deposit. cut in here because it is a two, three minute process. It is sure. really just public comment. But first of all, I want to say thank you very much for coming forward. Thank you for stepping up for your men and women. Uh, and I assure you, we, we will definitely look into it as a council. Uh, secondly, what I'd like to do with this council's permission is I'd like to appoint uh, a, a council member now to sit down with you and, and listen to, to what you feel uh, is fair and let this council person bring it back to us and we'll vote it up or down because it's a policy decision and we'll do it collectively as a council uh, if, if that's okay with you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, okay. I, I, if I might add, uh, Richard Vega, the Director of Customer Service, just uh, notified me that he's working on a, an ordinance to propose to you that would alleviate this issue. Thank so. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Manager. I'd like, I'd like to appoint at, at this time uh, Councilman Steve Shelley, if he would take the position and sit down with you and listen to what your concerns are, one by one. Now, I realize the homeowners associations we have absolutely no control over. And I can tell you, my wife being a realtor, she comes home frustrated every single night because she has rented many, many homes to wonderful, beautiful military people <laughs> and families. And she, we've, we've got new friends. Um, and it's very frustrating. Some of it's four weeks. So we need, you need to do the exact same thing you're doing with us, you need to do with them. Yes, sir. And go sit down with those homeowners associations and, and, and work out something respectfully for our service men and women. So with that said, as quick as you can set something up, uh, Councilman Shelley and, and uh, Staff Sergeant. Not a problem, Mayor. If you could leave your contact information with the clerk so that we can make sure we can get a hold of you and, and coordinate our schedule so we can sit down and talk. Will do. Will do. Thank you for your Thank you for stepping up. May I just Thank comment? You. Please. Um, I just want to tell you that I agree with the homeowners associations. I mean, I, I'm a realtor 35 years. I do it every day. 
and I, and I can tell you that there are some homeowners associations that you can work with, but the majority of them you cannot work with. And there's also homeowners associations that have special privileges for certain people, certain realtors, and not, and not across the board. So this is, I, I kind of disagree. I think we can do something with the homeowners associations because they need, they, they're the first ones to pick up the phone, the property managers to call the city when they have a problem, but they don't understand. And I've had heated arguments with them when they've told me it's a four week approval process when they're military or even three weeks. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So um, it's the same, I feel the same way about the, um, the FPNL security clearance for um, the people that work at FPNL. I mean, they go through the highest security clearances with the military and through the nuclear power plants. So there's a lot to be said here, and um, um, I mean, you know, I'm happy that they're working on the ordinance already. That's a, that's a kudos to our team. But but there, I think there is something that can be done with those homeowners associations. In, in this region's uh, senator and state rep, I assure you, that's what the law is set at, at the state. It's not set at the local level. It's set at the state level. And I assure you that they, you will get some help. Thank you, sir. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Williams. Let me, um, this question is probably for staff, but um, and I, I heard the city manager say something about uh, Mr. Vega. Mr. Vega, when, when is your ordinance supposed to, how, how, far, how far are you along the ordinance? And the two-part question, how far are you along with the ordinance, and does it include uh, what we're discussing here tonight? There? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Mr. Williams, the, we are aware of the policy. It has come up to my office before. Um, the deposit policy is obviously an ordinance that was written back in the 60s and 70s, and it does not reflect how we do business today. Um, it was something I was going to bring to you in February which was going to include uh, an exemption uh, for active duty military service personnel, just like FPL does. Um, our deposit policy right now is very strict. It's based on, on credit. So you have waived deposits. You have, you have good credit. If you have moderate credit, you get a medium deposit. And if you don't provide any identification or have bad debt and high risk customer, you have maximum deposit, which is the 360-282, which uh, the sergeant spoke about. Um, the ordinance would have to be rewritten, so we would have that exemption and follow the same form um, that any active duty military personnel, and, and of course include the process, so if they are delinquent or they default on payment with utilities, there'd be a method of contact. Okay, okay. and then in that, uh, are you, uh, when you say exempt, what do you mean exempt from the deposit or just a reduction in the, what the amount will be? We were thinking of, of doing the waived deposits. Uh, okay. like, like the gentleman said, uh, our deposit policy is based on risk. Right. And therefore, uh, military to us does impose a risk of default uh, because there are serious consequences. They can lose their security clearances, et cetera. So um, the proposal that was going to come to you in February with, a, with ordinance, and as you know, it has to be read twice, <laughs> would be to waive deposits. Uh, like if there were a good credit customer, we would waive deposits for them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you both. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, also. Good evening, Mayor, Council. While I was up here before, I wanted to mention, uh, I'm sorry, Robert Chaplin, 5940 Southwest 102 Avenue, Miami, Florida. Um, I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Homestead. Hello, everybody. Hello. President of the Rotary Club of Homestead, and we have our big fundraiser of the year coming up on February 1st. Matter of fact, we got some distinguished Rotarians in the room, if I can embarrass them a little bit. <laughs> we got Dale Machesic, we got Dennis Maytan over there, and then we actually have a councilman that's uh, in the Rotary Club. If you want to see him work, come on out February 1st. It's a dinner. Uh, you don't need to buy the dinner. If you want a dinner ticket, just see any Rotarian. Uh, and uh, it's a raffle and an auction. If you don't want to do any of the, the, the eating part, come on out, see what we got. Support the Rotary Club because the money that comes in goes back out to scholarships. Uh, last year, I think we helped Central Campesino and some other things that I think Councilwoman Waldman was working on. So uh, uh, come on out, support us. We appreciate your help, and we appreciate this community. Thank you. Thank yes, sir. Mr. Do you want to talk about the boat or yeah, the boat in the car? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. See, I, I forgot the other part too. We're raffling off a boat. And, 
We're wrapping off a boat and a classic car. Uh, you see, I uh, think just any one of the Rotarians can help you with that. The boat is uh, $100 a ticket. Uh, actually, there's $25 tickets, one for $25, five for $100. And then this MG, it's a 1970 MG. We only have 175 tickets. And I think, Dale, what do we have, 100 sold? Over 100 sold, and that's the maximum. So once once they're gone, those are gone. The boat is kind of open-ended. On the boat, you could take uh, the boat or a $10,000 cash prize. Uh, and again, all that money goes back right into to the city of Homestead. Did I forget anything else? And actually, just just so you guys know, I could get we find they find the sergeant at arms finds us if we make mistakes or we, we're out of order. You're Councilman right. Shelley is a sergeant at arms, and so is Dale Machesic. So if I've messed up tonight, I'll be getting fined at the next meeting. <laughs> Did I forget anything else? You forgot the date. Excuse me. <laughs> February first at six o'clock at Harris Field, the Barn Pavilion. Yeah, the bar, yeah, the, the pavilion over there, yes. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> I just figured I'd use up all my time. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question before you, before you leave. Is there an application process for the scholarships? Because, of course, that threw up my antenna. Yeah, that's right. That, that does appeal to you. Yes, there is. And uh, the CAP advisors for each of the schools, the high school kids, uh, should have it beginning of um, uh, March. Now, uh, Bob Epling is our scholarship chairman. So once we have those out, we'll make sure we get them out to the schools and then we can even come back in and maybe announce that they are available for people to go out. And it's not just for high school kids, it's also for college kids that live in Homestead or went to a, a, a thing. So we've, ha we've got scholarship applicants that follow us all the way through to the graduate from uh, college and then come back and give back to the community. And actually Jen Helms is one of those. She was re re a scholarship recipient, went to school, on the, um, part of the scholarships, and then she come back, and she's an active member of the Rotary Club of Homestead. So, uh, yes, we'll make sure that we get that information to you guys and put it on our website. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Robert. Anything else? <laughs> Good to see you guys again. Thank you. Thank you about 15 bucks. <laughs> Howdy, uh, Jim Baumann, President of Homestead Rotary Association, Mayor and Council. Thanks for letting us. Uh, Stop by. I just want to give a quick national perspective on rodeo. Our rodeo is PRCA sanctioned. That's the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. Basically, what that means is the contestants, everyone involved in that sporting event, are top notch professionals. So you're going to see top quality rodeo. Um, there were 591 rodeos last year, PRCA rodeos in the U.S. That's the business is up from the previous year. The commissioner at the uh, board of directors meeting in December says that with the sport of rodeos on the precipice of a boom. They expect it to really expand. They're looking to expand television coverage in the future uh, through GAC. And they're going to be picking rodeos in different states to have a one-hour made for TV rodeo event basically in 2014 Kissimmee Florida is going to be one of those our goal as an association is to have Homestead be one of those I'm going to let Jerry Barber talk about all the local stuff we're doing so thank you excellent thank you good evening mayor good evening council I'm Jerry Barber I'm the arena director for the Homestead Rodeo Association uh, basically what I want to do is give you a, ro a rundown and an open invitation to the events leading up to and including rodeo. On Wednesday night at 6 p.m. at the Sally A. Woods Memorial Pavilion, it is Little Mr. Little Mrs. Homestead Rodeo 2013. It is also our Queen Coronation. Um, Thursday, Council, this is an open invitation at 9 o'clock a.m. at the Homestead Rodeo Grounds is the Books in Bronx, Homestead Books in Bronx, literacy program for a lot of the first graders in local schools inside the city of Homestead. It's a literacy program that we've done, I believe we've done it for eight years now. Twelve. Twelve. I was off. Twelve years, and we'd like to invite you to come out and observe and look and see what we're trying to do to help with literacy in the city of Homestead. Um, Thursday night is our um, Mechanical Bull Buck-Off Challenge and also Rodeo Bingo. 
Um, we, the Rodeo Bingo, we're giving back to two organizations. This is a dog and also patches. Um, Friday night at 8 p.m. starts the 64th Annual Homestead Championship Rodeo at 8 p.m. 11 o'clock on Saturday is the parade downtown Homestead. On, on both Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. is the Saturday and Sunday performance of the Homestead Championship Rodeo. So, council, members of Homestead, I, we'd love to have you come out, check out our event. I know there's a lot of people that live in Homestead that didn't even know we had a rodeo. So we've kind of reached out in different directions with the community, and different events, try to help, you know, piggyback different events that have happened inside of Homestead to go out and advertise to get more people involved. So on that note, we're ready to rodeo. Check us out at homesteadrodeo.com, and we will see City of Homestead Council at our events. Thank you, Council, and have a good evening. Excellent job. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. My name is Richard DiBenedetto, local resident since 1959. Uh, I saw a lot of people tonight were recognized, and I just wanted to take one second. Phil Machesnik over here is the new uh, editor for the News Leader, doing a fantastic job. He may not be from Homestead, but you sure think he was the way he's really trying to do something for our community. And what I'm here tonight is two little issues. Uh, one is I'm doing a rock concert at Harris Field, February 23rd. We're trying to raise money for autism. Uh, I've provided everybody with the council a packet. Not that that means anything, but if the city wanted to do some form of a uh, sponsorship, there's a number of them that are in there from 1,000 to 500. I'm also willing to donate 100 tickets to City Homestead employees that if they could sell them for $15, which is $20 at the gate, all that money goes directly to uh, the Autism Foundation as well as uh, four VIP tables. Uh, that I'm offering to them, and I'm trying to do a lot of other things, but I just wanted to bring it to the City Council's attention that I'm doing this. Uh, I did one in October for uh, the dog rescues, and that was Country Western. This one is rock and roll. Um, you did one for patches? Did one for patches. Rock and roll, we did patches last year at this time. So this one, it's yeah. autism, and then it was that. And let me just chime in and give a little kudos to Richard, because uh, <clears throat> the autism is very near and dear to my heart. And this is going to an autism uh, program right here in Homestead that will exist eventually. Uh, it's Autism Research Center. And what this will do is provide uh, uh, hours after school at 2 o'clock. Most people do not know that all autistic ch uh, high school children have absolutely no after school program. Zero. None. No computer program, no basketball, no baseball, no cheerleading. You pick up your child at 2 o'clock and you take them somewhere. That's all they tell you. You take them somewhere. So hopefully the somewhere uh, next, uh, next year will be Autism, Research, uh, Autism Resource Center in Homestead. So thank you, Richard. And if there's anybody, any organizations or anybody out there that wants to do anything for the autism, our door is open. Thank you so so, very much. You're welcome. And also the other thing, I was here a month ago on soccer fields. I had passed out a thing and you have to have a soccer field and an indoor building with walls and a roof and well, they said to check back in one month. So I was checking back in one month to find out if we still have to do that indoors. Okay, we're going to let Ms. Wallman uh, answer that. Um, we are in this process of looking into all the different um, aspects of the regarding soccer and children. Um, there's been a lot of changes that's been going on in the last few months. So if you will, uh, I have your number here on, okay. on your printout. Um, I know I have a series of meetings next week, so I'll be happy to call you. And I'd love to meet with you because I have a 14-year-old, um, pretty severely autistic uh, grandchild. Excellent. So, um, it's, it's, 
what you're doing is very important. And they don't have any sports programs at all. I know Mr. Bateman's lucky enough to have a program in your school with the swimming, and they've done, they've excelled with that, you know. But um, but we'll we'll talk. Dennis and I will make an, an appointment to meet with you next week. And Thank we'll you. I appreciate that. that. Thank you so much. And I have some posters here. I'll leave them on the table if anybody wants to look at them or hang them up or do whatever. Else. We'll They're get, here. We'll get them on now. Okay. You'll we'll have a good night. You too. Hey, Mayor. Yes, Mr. Um, this may be question is for development services, but didn't you send out an email regarding soccer fields? Yes, sir. I uh, sent one out. Uh, council asked to do some research on it. We did so uh, immediately following the last council meeting, and uh, what what we found was we looked at the code, and the code classifies, we classify that <laughs> under an entertainment use, and the code says that all these entertainment uses need to be done indoors. So it would be mat a matter of making a code modification to approve an outdoor soccer field. So we just have to, the code would just have to be rewritten and then you'll bring it for us to... If that's your desire, we can do that. Just but I think that it'd go to the proper chair and just sit down with them and, and, let, and let's get it as quickly as we can possibly get it done so that we don't miss an opportunity for somebody who might want to spend a little money in our city to build a soccer field, you know? So if you'll sit down with the chair, which is Ms. Walman. Yes, sir. Please. Um, I'll include Joe. If you, you'll be, Dennis, let's include Joe in, in the meetings and, and somebody from the management staff as well so that we can knock it out. <laughs> okay. And we'll, we'll have a meeting before we start meeting with the other people. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Just one quick question uh, uh, to the mayor, to Joe. Um, and the ordinance, have you looked at the ordinance in Miami-Dade County? Because I visited a few actually after hearing, uh, getting the email. I actually visited a few, uh, one uh, and, and by the Tamiami Airport because my daughter ended, started playing uh, soccer. And so I did see a few throughout Miami-Dade County, so I'm just wondering if you visited Miami-Dade's ordinance. An, out, an, out, an outdoor soccer facility? Yes. Now, I haven't looked at Miami-Dade County. Open space. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of within a fence system and, and uh, it's lit up and, you know, they, they kind of rent it out. But uh, I know they do exist, so I was just wondering if you've looked into it. I haven't looked at their ordinance yet, but we will. Um, okay. And if you would just follow up with me, I'll give you the address. Maybe you can look into them. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Former Mayor Fred Rhodes. I'm Paul Bill. I was born in Homestead, Florida, 70, 80, 87 years ago. And I served on this council for 16 years, some as mayor, some as vice mayor, and I enjoyed it. And I know you people enjoying the job you're doing, and you're doing a good job. I'm here tonight because I'm having a problem. I sold some land I had for a roof press company to some Cuban people about two years ago, and they made a junkyard in it, and we gave them a lot of things to do, and they did it. And it's a beautiful place now. But they gave me an easement when I sold the land to get to my property because I'm landlocked now. But then they made provisions there when they built the wall around the building. They left the place for me to come in. But now they decided they don't want that to happen. They don't want, to, they don't want to give me the easement, so I'm landlocked over there. And I need to get that easement so I can get into my place. And uh, I talked about cutting the wall down. We put a wall up there years ago. The city gave me a permission to put a wall up on the front to block my property off so nobody go in there and see everything. But that wall is leaning, and if I cut a hole in that wall, I think the whole wall will fall. So what I want the council to do is to find out if I'm landlocked. I am landlocked, and I need to get into my place, and I want them to give me an easement. And that's what I'm asking for. Find out who's going to give me the easement, and give me an easement so I can get to my place. Okay. Can, let me, uh, let me defer... This has been going on now for quite a while. Richard, just give us a little. Yeah, I think that we should um, uh, have uh, Joe and James look at this um, and, uh, and see what the circumstances are, and then we can advise you. I, I'm not familiar with this exactly, but we, we'll uh, look at it and get back to Mr. Rhodes. Okay. Joe, have you seen the, the property? Yes, we've, we've looked at this uh, on a number of occasions. Uh, I believe he is landlocked. It's a, it's a property that sits... Um, 
the only access to it is through somebody else's property. Um, and it was our recommendation earlier that they, they, they two property owners get together and figure he did have access before. That access um, has been removed and we really need to uh, figure out a way to get him some access there. So he's got to get to his property. Okay, so is that something you can research fairly quick? Uh, I will do some more homework on it and uh, and try to get a an answer. Okay, Mr. Rhodes, Good. development services are going to look at. I made it seven years old and I didn't hear a word he said. Okay, the right the right person for the city is going to look into it, and then bring it back to council. Okay, and we'll make a decision on it. Uh, the development services is going to look into it, and they believe that you have uh, that you are landlocked. Now, okay. We're going to take care of it. We're going we're gonna to get you the right okay, answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me, let me tell you something else, too, that I'm concerned about. We have the best garbage service of any city in the state of Florida. We give a lot of recognition to other departments up here, but we need to give some recognition to those garbage people. They're great people. And they pick that garbage up on a Saturday, a Sunday, a Fourth of July, Christmas Day, or any time. They never get any recognition. The code enforcement are real good people too, and that's not an easy job. They never get any recognition. We got a lot of people here that do good work. Electric department's great department, but we need to give a lot of those people some recognition too once in a while, you know. Put a photo in your cap. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. If, if I could just say one thing to the mayor, um, this is our last meeting here in, the, in this council chamber, and, and we have history right here in front of us with Ms. Campbell and, and Mr. Rhodes, and it, I mean, the years that you served and the time that you spent, I know I've spent 12 years in this room, and I was, I was reflecting on it this morning. And I just want to say thank you for your years of service. Can you hear me, Fred? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you hear me, Fred? <laughs> I want to say thank you, Fred, and Mayor, Mayor, Pastor Mayor. Thank you. Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I just, it was, I was just saying it's a little nostalgic setting here. That's right. That's right. Well, we don't want you to die, but but I just wanted to say thank you for your years of service, and, and this is our last meeting, and it's so profound that you're sitting here tonight in the audience. So I know you're going to leave soon, so I just wanted to say that. So thank you, Mayor, very much. Thank you. Do we have uh, our PIO here? Is she here? Could, could we ask um, Ms. Campbell and, and Mr. Rhodes to come up and stand right here? And we could stand up real quick and just take a photo op with them because actually Fred is like the originator of this building. Fred is the founder of the bricks and mortar you know, of it. Whatever you want to do. I said easy. We just stood up. Again, Jessica Uhake, Chefs on the Run, 10 East, Maori Drive, Homestead, Florida, 33030. I'm here to first 
ask about the DOT, the signs that are going to be put on US-1. I saw you last week. You said for me to remind you the signs on US-1 and on the expressway for downtown historic Homestead. We can't even pick on him and that. He's not here. Julio, great up. But those signs were, were, were brought that night, and we just we need to find what we did to locate them. Okay, and then thank you very much for the recognition for Chef Son You're welcome. And I also wanted to make sure that part of the letter and anybody who's interested that we have sponsor levels and we want to have as much information about Homestead at our booth. We want to really take the opportunity to have everyone know yeah, okay. that this is a great city and that we have more of a flair than other cities because again we are the last frontier and we're on our way down to the keys. I already told Miss Knowles that I would be having her historic homestead in the little booklets that Bedonia did. At the, I, I want to encourage a lot of I want a lot of traffic down here. It's a win-win, so I really need help. You saw the big books now, right? I didn't see those. Yeah. I have the little ones, these are so I need those. I found these in somebody's store downtown. Nobody <laughs> told me about them either. Well, I need some of those because I have a community board there. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, and I want to make sure, again, thank you so much. And I hope we get to do it. Have we cooperated with you? Of course. Okay. Of course. Well, Patricia, right now, that Miss McCormick, she acknowledged us and she gave us a little donation. Thank you so much again. It's our first donation. I'm, I'm stoked. And I hope that we get more. And again, in the letter it says it. And I hope that with now with the news leader that's sitting next to me, I hope I get the opportunity for them to write a story on it. Because I would love um, to get as much sponsorship as possible and as much information at our booth. Okay, it's very important. And that you all know, and everybody that's heard me, that has a pulse that goes to our restaurant, I'm always saying, downtown Homestead needs help. Please help. So thank you so much. Okay? Bye. We'll find those signs. Mr. Manager, what'd you do with the signs? <laughs> I know they're in this building. <laughs> okay. Yes, one more thing. Oh, sure, sure, real quick. We get our meeting started here before 730. I, I forgot one thing, or we forgot to say one thing. The, the, our parade team this year is for the centennial, uh, for the city of Homestead. That's a parade team. And Ruth Campbell is our parade marshal. Okay. Um, and Saturday we're dedicating that performance to the centennial. We'd like to do a little presentation before we get started. So if any council members would like to be there, we'd love to have you. We hope to have the Wells Fargo stagecoach in there, but that's not worked out yet, but we're trying. But, uh
but then they do try to get them removed. It's a big job. Yeah. And, and we've actually cooperated with them. We've said, you know, we have the trucks. If you give us the notice and we work it out, we'll pick it up. We'll help you out. We've worked with them cooperatively. But it's something that it's not that they're legal. They're not. It's keeping up with the enforcement because this proliferation is a really serious issue. And the reason I brought it up is because I didn't want the public nor my I, – I, I'm just throwing the elephant in the room here. I didn't want anyone to think that, that you know, that there was anything wrong with the county ordinance, it's just a matter of enforcement. And I know our police department under Chief Rolls' gui guidance will make sure that that is enforced to the, to, the, to the letter of the law. So I have no problem with that because I agree with you. Um, they just show up like mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a constant challenge yes. to keep up. And Thank quite you. often the landlords have never given permission. They just exactly. appear. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ma'am. Ms. Shelley. Ms. Shelley. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have an issue with, with that. You proposed it with the amendments, because I think you've taken the best of the Miami-Dade County Ordinance and incorporated it into what our direction has been, and that was to l eliminate the proliferation of these drop boxes by the for-profits. That we're on the same page there as far as trying to make sure there's not fraud perpetrated that these boxes are going to, you know, actual needy people, that when you donate to these boxes, they're going to a good cause. And that's something we wanted to make sure, and also make sure they weren't, you know, rampant across our city, city limits. And so I think the combination between the county ordinance and what we had at the first reading, the, the combination you've made, I think, works. Because the concern I have with some of the restrictions on the Miami County ordinance is it's too strict. Because if, if, say, the Rotary Club of Homestead wanted to put a bend at the Chevy dealership for a week or two weeks or six months to collect clothing or food or whatever we might be doing under the Miami-Dade County, that's illegal. We can't do it, correct? Correct. And the same thing, this Hurricane Sandy Drive, we just had this trailer. And same thing, if we were to take that trailer as an organization, any off profit and put it in front of a for-profit organization, and we wouldn't be able to do that. And on top of that, because all under the Miami-Dade County Code, everything has to stay within Miami-Dade County, we couldn't have taken those donations and then shipped them up to New Jersey. No, I think the Miami-Dade County Code says that um, if, you're, if you're using the donations for a disaster relief, then you okay, can Okay, then there's an exception for that. But if you were to do it for something different, then you still wanted to adopt a city that maybe it wasn't a disaster relief, but you wanted to help one out. You would, so what I, I guess my concern is, is that it's too... To me, that's too restrictive, and I think that we ha what we have is, is a good combination. So I'm okay with what we have, but, you know, and again, I'll... I'll Mr. Mayor, if I may? Yes, ma'am. Um, to respond to that, we've worked with Miami-Dade County for certain amendments, and a recent amendment, which might not be in your package, is one that we worked with them on for temporary donation bins. And it is with a limited duration for a limited purpose. And... Uh, the, the, again, subject to certain restrictions, but there are ways that we would be willing to work to achieve those types of goals, which is why we said if you're not inclined to adopt the Day County version, then we would certainly be willing to talk to you about another version that would have a, uh, certain exceptions. But the version that you have on the books right now, it will not discourage the people who are really defrauding the public. There are, and again, I've got materials for you that I'll distribute to you. There are a number of organizations out there that will create a fund not for profit. And then they have elaborate contracts whereby through those contracts they can ensure that the proceeds of the donations are not going to serve a public beneficial purpose. Um, and people who are donating think they're doing something good. They think they're doing something to help, when in fact maybe only five cents on the dollar is going to a charitable purpose. And that's really the point that we were trying to make, that your ordinance as it is drafted now will permit that circumstance. And that's what we'd like to see narrowed down through regulation because it, it's really a fraud on the public. And just as importantly, the people of your community who can benefit from those donations really aren't getting the benefit and they're being deprived of what the legitimate charities would do for them. And, and I, if, if I may, if I might allow Mr. If you would allow Mr. Pastrana to address you. 
I'm through. I don't know that I agree with the statement. I guess I'd ask staff. I mean, my understanding is that, you know, reading here, there are plenty of safeguards as far as making sure that they're 501c3 companies that are putting these bins out. I mean, beyond that, I don't know how we as a city can do more. I mean, that is more of a, you know, internal revenue issue or state of Florida issue or, you know, tracking down any type of fraudulent activity. I, I don't know how we do more than, than require them to do 501c3. So I'm, I'm safe. I'm, you know, based on what I have here and what I've seen in my conversations, I don't necessarily have any concerns. I think we've done all we can do as a city. So, I mean, that, that's all I have. I guess I'm going to... Thank you, Mr. Molinato. Yes, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, my concern was that once we had this, started this discussion was that, you know, how do we identify and make sure that these federal, uh, these, these nonprofit organizations are legitimate and they're not front? So I'm, I'm glad you, you answered that. And cause that was my concern. I'm like... I think anyone could kind of do a, a, a nonprofit organization and, and set up these boxes. And, and but how do we track, and which, which Councilman Shelley brought up, how do we find out that these companies are legitimate companies uh, and, and doing the right work? And, and, and I, I, you know, I agree with what our, our development services done and what they brought forward. I, I don't want to uh, kind of make it too strict, uh, but I, I would like to at least have a provision that would, um, you know, make sure that the, those nonprofits are legitimate nonprofits that are either servicing our community or making sure that it's a legitimate company and not a front. So I would look for something in that nature. And, and uh, yeah, definitely if, would like to see some more documents. And again, Mr. Mayor, if I may, one of the ways that we've addressed that is in addition to having um, the requirement that the proceeds be used for the charitable mission within the greater community. We make the applicant sign a notarized statement to that effect. There is an annually renewable permit, and if, there, if that condition of the permit or the permit application is violated, then the per permit can be revoked. So the department has the opportunity, after getting this notarized statement, to request information about compliance with that notarized statement. And that's one of the ways. It's not foolproof. Uh, people who are intent on scamming come up with lots of different schemes. And, but that is one methodology that we, uh, again, working cooperatively with Miami-Dade County, implemented into that ordinance so that the enforcement people have a mechanism for requiring information and have a mechanism for revocation if that compliance is not there. Your ordinance doesn't have anything about assurance that the proceeds of the donations will be used for the charitable purpose. And it doesn't have anything that gives your departments the opportunity to make the inquiry and revoke the permit if those permit conditions are not met. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Williams. Okay, I, I sit here and listen. I'm ready to move on. Um, but <laughs> with one, I see twofold purpose. I, I, I see two issues. One issue is that we're trying to eliminate, you know, persons just dropping the boxes. Then I'm hearing another issue from Goodwill is that now they, they have a problem with the ordinance that we have put forth simply because um, we may not have language in there for them that we would have teeth enough to kind of uh, make sure that the organization is using the proceeds for whatever reason uh, that it goes to. And I don't know if, if we ought to get into that. I think if, if we've, you know, I think development service have done what they have been required to do. I'm comfortable with the ordinance. Um, and it seems like it's just a monopoly trying to hold other nonprofits or whatever entity from doing what, you know, they need to do that could be very much legitimate. And uh, at the same time, as I, you know, respect goodwill, but I think um, the development service have done, we have top-notch persons that uh, is in development services that uh, has done this for quite some time. And so uh, I'm, I'm ready to move with the ordinance. So I call for the vote, Mayor. Okay. Uh, do we have any other discussion? Yes. Yeah. Sure, please, Ms. Strong. So if we vote on this as it's put before us tonight, then we are not adopting any of the Dade County in the, or are we? You're not. Okay. It's, uh, Mr. Mayor, 
Yes. Just for clarification, our motion included the amendments that were recommended by developmental services yeah, we because first reading didn't have amendments and then there's amendments within our package showing that they need to include that developmental services has taken some of Miami-Dade County's ordinance and placed it into our ordinance. So the motion that was made in second in is to adopt the ordinance on first reading plus the amendments. Is that correct? Is that what we're voting on? Joe? Yes. Mike? What we have in our staff report, we have uh, three amendments that we've proposed. And yes. these are things that we believe um, that were very similar to the Miami-Dade County ordinance right. that, that would satisfy um, that. I would make an addition. The first amendment would be to Section A, and the last sentence uh, we we added that the uh, the uh, declared um, that these uh, organizations be also declared from uh, payment of federal uh, exempt from payment from uh, federal income taxes by the United States Internal Revenue Service, and I, and I believe maybe we can just add that that be a registered 501c3 just to be more specific. But you know, verbally, we want to make that amendment to be more okay. specific now. Okay. But, but to answer my question, the answer is yes. The motion, the, what we are voting on is with these amendments, yes, Section A, B, and the three amendments you recommended, that is what we're voting on tonight. Yes, so we would make those amendments to the, uh, to the ordinance. Okay. So uh, to answer Ms. Wallen's question, because there is, there is teeth in the county. Yes, yes. yes. Procedurally, though, we may have to actually do that on the right. record. So. Correct. <clears throat> Correct. If, if, if j uh, we need to announce what those amendments will okay. be to the ordinance, so if you'll just allow the planning director to go through each one of those three, uh, so that it's memorialized for the record. Uh, go ahead and just so kind of formulate the motion for us. You know, yes, so, so I, w I would assume that you're going to make a motion that would adopt the, the ordinance on second reading with the following amendments. The, the amendments would read Section A, definitions, uh, Article 5, a nonprofit charitable organization shall be defined as an organization which is organized and registered in accordance with the requirements of Chapter 617 Florida statutes and which has been declared exempt from the payment of federal income taxes by the United States Internal Revenue Service, or being a 501. Known as a 501. Known as a 501. Um, amendment number two, Section E zoning would be amended to include the following. Uh, one, drop boxes and donation trailers will be located on sites in accordance with the requirements of the zoning code, section 3047, site plan regulations, provided that further that they shall operate in a safe manner, be neat in appearance, well maintained, free of gratuity, uh, fully painted, and shall be buffered from adjacent properties by on-site landscaping, walls, or similar screening as approved by the Development Services Director. Section 2 would read the not-for-profit organization operating each drop box or donation trailer shall submit a declaration of use approved by the Development Services Director. Item 3, Amendment 3 rather, Section F, Maximum Allowance, uh, Article 2 permits would read each not-for-profit may have one drop box or one collection trailer permitted uh, in the city each year. Letter B, donation drop boxes and connection trailers shall be permitted for a 12-month period, renewable annually. That is the amendments. So somebody would need to move to adopt, to uh, amend the ordinance on the floor. I'll make that, I'll make that motion to amend. Second. To, yeah, Can we have a motion to motion. amend uh, what was just read into the record and a second? Um, we need to... Um, open this to public hearing. Is, are we through discussing it now at this time? Okay, I'd like to open to public hearing. Uh, anyone in the public uh, would like to make a comment on this, please come forward this time. Mr. Pastrana would like to address you also. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the Commission, I want, to, I, want to appreciate, I want to thank you for the support that you provide to rural industries with this ordinance. We serve over 5,000 individuals with very severe disabilities in Miami-Dade County. We serve many individuals in this area. And we have evidence here that we would like to leave with you, which is what is happening in many cities with these collection boxes with your permission. I would like to pass this pamphlet so you can face them. This is a collection of news stories about the collection boxes being operated by illegitimate organizations. The reason you have these collection boxes in Homestead is because we have been able to have ordinances in other areas so they are moving into the area. I believe that, uh, that if you allow the proliferation of these boxes to continue, you are going to have a very serious enforcement problem. These boxes are placed at night 
in properties, in, they don't have the permission of the owners. They create a very serious problem to us because we are continuously being called as to take responsibility for the boxes and remove them, and we cannot remove them. I can assure you that if you eliminate these boxes, you will be protecting the citizens in your community for many individuals. And I suggest that you look at the information that we have in this pamphlet, and it will give you a very good idea. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further public comment? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any final comment from council? Mr. Shell. Mr. Mayor, I don't really want to extend this discussion, but uh, development services or, or the city attorney, I have a question. That is, we had an issue when we had the shopping cart ordinance that was passed that gave us permission to seize these shopping carts. And so if we have a similar situation with these recycling bins in which they, they are put up there illegally and there's an enforcement issue, and we need to enforce it so that we come out there and seize the bins. Do we have permission to then dispose them as we see fit, or are we going to have to store them like we did the shopping carts for months and years on end? Or can we go ahead and make sure that's included in here, that we can seize it, notify whoever's phone number is on there, and then we can sell it for scrap metal uh, for recycling purposes so that it gives us a, a methodology? I believe that's included, but I need to find exactly where it is if you give me a sec. Okay, I just want to make sure because I don't want to see us start having a collection of these bins over near the transfer station and then, and then we have to figure out what to do with them. Not to extend this debate anymore, but... Oh, that's fine. That's fine. And Dennis, while they're looking for that, since we're talking about the shopping carts, um, we got to get him to start closing that gate again. I don't I'm sorry. We've got to get him to start. I don't understand the question. Well, no, it's just the, the gate's being left open now. You go by a lot. I go by on, on numerous occasions, and the, you can see all the shopping carts in there. So if, if we're using that that vinyl sided gate to kind of keep that deterred, we need to close it every time we come out of there. The, the problem that we had over the shopping carts is that we have to leave it open for the uh, the owners uh, of the shopping carts so they can pick it up. So we can't lock it. We do keep it closed, but we do have a problem oh, where they, they come back in, they leave it open, oh, and we have to go by and try it. But we have to leave it by, by the rule yeah, that they can go ahead and get their shopping cart. So if nice. they don't, they'll complain. Well, see, I wouldn't know if I wouldn't ask that. I, I, whoever's been in there last has left, been leaving it open. <laughs> so we've addressed your concern in, uh, in Section L, revocation of permit. And essentially what we'll do is if we've got an illegal box, we'll go cite it. Um, they have 30 days to remedy the problem. If it's not, we have the right to pick it up and dispose of it at their cost. So we don't have to store it. We can. But does it also give us a right to then sell it to a recycling company and make 50 bucks on the deal to pay for the enforcement? It, it doesn't. We can dispose of it in in any way we see fit. It looks like so. If we want. Okay, to as long as it said, because that's what we did with the, the shopping carts, and that was a way we could. Otherwise, we had to store it because. Even though it was at their cost, we could bill them, but they never showed up for their cards. Yeah, so. we, we, we can store or dispose of it, so it doesn't so matter. Okay. That's all I want to make. We want with it once we get it. Do you think that 30 days, we're just, all we're doing is creating a 30 day? Well, is that that's quick enough, 30 days? Are we allow them to, allow them to sit there for 30 days? Um, I think it gives them the opportunity to uh, remedy the problem in a fair way. 30 days, and we can do it faster if you want. I wouldn't do it much faster than 50. No, no, I just, I just, I mean, if I was going to do that, I'd go get a couple of inexpensive boxes, set them out there for 30 days, get what I wanted to out of them, and in 30 days I'd pick it up, or you guys will pick it up. So, I don't know, 30 days no, fast enough? No, I agree, because 30 days, essentially, if I, if I wanted to make some money, I'd leave it out there illegally for 30 days. 30 days. I'd, I'd keep picking stuff up for them, and at the end of 30 days, I'd let you dispose of it, and I'd go put another box out. So, it might be better to do a, a faster turnaround and discourage them from operating in that direction. We could say we could have zero tolerance on illegal boxes and just say once we flat, we'll, we'll red tag it and it's ours. That's ours. Right. The problem, the problem, is, uh, the problem is, Councilman Shelley, is that um, we are taking okay. so much profit. But it's a due, due process, so we need to give them some due process and, okay. and uh, suggest uh, what uh, the uh, development service director said. It sounds very attractive. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, we are taking some like of these property. We need to give them some due process, and I think 30 days is really um, That's in chat. You know, maybe you can so cut down a little bit, but you need to give them an opportunity to remove their property. So, okay. so mm -hmm. Mayor. And if I did something like that, I'd get a fine, plus I'd have to move it. Yeah, I, I plus a call from the city attorney. Exactly, plus a call from the city attorney. Ms. Wallman, go ahead. Through the mayor, okay. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I like the zero tolerance, and I would say five days. I mean, you know, 
put it in, get it out, and if you don't, that's okay. it. And and then worry about it later. Five days not enough? I think five days not enough. Fifteen days. When when I was James, <laughs> is there any case law on how much time we have to give? Uh, I would need to look at that. I mean, m m most of the case law that deals with is a reasonable time frame and standard issue is anywhere from 15 to 30 days, m more than the 30 days as a cautionary. But, but this, let me get back to your question, th this only deals with the revocation of a permit. If someone came in and they got a permit and for whatever reason they were non-compliant with their permit and we as a city revoke their permit, once we, once the permit's revoked, then they have 30 days because they can always come to you and appeal that. So in the instance where someone just goes out and just puts a donation drop right. box or a donation trailer without even coming in and going through the whole process, once we notice that, then your regular code enforcement procedures kick in immediately. Immediately, and you uh, you would follow through with your regular code enforcement proceedings uh, as. Uh, so, uh, so not allowed. Okay. So then, to answer my question on the on the issue of whether we can or can't take them, it'd be under another code section. If we don't have a code section dealing with the boxes, then we would have to draft one like we did with the shopping cart to give us permission to. Correct. Right, right so. now, under penalties, it uh, uh, on on uh, page seven, uh, paragraph N, you'll see penalties, and it just throws you into your regular code enforcement proceedings. Okay. Okay. So then I'm okay with the current. I guess this one as it exists. Um, but then I guess we need to direct staff to look at bringing back an enforcement ordinance dealing with, I guess, ones that aren't under this, under the permit, so that we can come out and see them and, and then uh, recycle them, scrap them, whatever we do. Is that correct? In order to effectuate the goal, otherwise we're going to be stacking these things up somewhere. We, we could always, you could always pass this, we could always yes. come back with... Uh, that's what he's suggesting. Yes, is that we pass this ordinance and then we come back. We can come back and under the regular code and address just like the shopping carts. We would have an ordinance that addresses unclaimed or left behind uh, drop boxes or whatever we, we decide. We do to that. Find. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any final questions? All right. Hearing none. Madam Clerk, call the roll. First, um, we need to. I'm sorry. First, we need to call the roll on the amendment and then on the ordinance. Okay. The amendment. Here we go. Councilman Schelling. Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick? Yes. yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Wallman? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Hey, before we go on, did I? We need to do now. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the ordinance uh, as amended. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Wallman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And thank you for coming forward. Uh, did I miss something with the Rodeo Association? Is, is there one more announcement? And I'm going through the whole council meeting. And did we leave Miss the Rodeo Queen out or something? Okay. No, thank you. I, I saw you all sitting here, and some left and some stayed. And I, I don't want to make you wait and, and labor you through this entire council meeting. Okay, we're going to go back to the beginning of the agenda, and let's take the, uh, uh, the addendum one, uh, which is, uh, was, the, uh, was the addition, and that is the additional property tax exemption um, for certain qualified seniors. I actually had the, the, the tax assessor, uh, the new uh, Carlos Quintero, called me on this today, in fact, uh, and asked me uh, if we were going to move forward on it, and I saw it on the agenda put on today, so uh, with that, we need a motion to move it on. Let me uh, re read the ordinance, please. Okay. An ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the city code by amending chap uh, Article 4, Homestead Exemption for Senior Citizens of Chapter 26 Taxes, to revise title section and article to provide for an additional homestead exemption for low-income seniors, updating provisions provided for severability, inclusion of the code, for delivery to the property appraiser and an effective date. This is a first reading. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have a motion. How about a second? Second. second. Thank you, Ms. Wallman. Okay. All in favor? No. We need to uh, discussion. Any discussion? Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Nay. I'm sorry. It's an ordinance, so we need a, a voice vote. Well, it's listed wrong on my agenda then. <laughs>
That's all fine. That's that's great. Okay. No no. Uh, open the public uh, to public hearing. Can I have some input from the public on this uh, tax exemption for seniors. Okay. Hearing none. Seeing none. I'll close the public hearing. Any final comments from council? Okay. Madam Clerk. Councilman Maldonado. Yes. Councilwoman Waldman. Yes. Councilwoman Fairfield McCormick. Yes. yes. Councilman Shelley. Yes. Mayor Bateman. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, consent agenda. Motion to move that. Move it. Thank you. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Public hearings, uh, ordinance land use items, quasi judicial public hearings, sir. Attorney? Yes. <clears throat> Please be advised that the following items on the agenda are quasi judicial in nature. If you wish to comment upon any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff has made their presentations on each item. Swearing in all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross examination. If you do not wish to either be cross examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the council to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization, and further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2-591, any lobbyists must register before addressing the council on any of the following items. At this time, council members must disclose any ex parte communications they've had concerning any of the following items on the quasi-judicial agenda. Thank you, sir. Hearing none at this time, the clerk will swear in anyone wishing to testify. Please stand and raise your right hand. State your name. Hereby swear or affirm that the information I present shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay. Uh, tab 13. Yes, tab 13 is the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, concerning the request of Carl de Nebrega for a rezoning of approximately 14,247 square foot parcel from one family district, R1, to professional business restricted district, B1A, for property located at 190 Northwest 14th Street, as legally described in Exhibit A, and providing for an effective date. This is the second and final reading. Move it. Thank you. Staff? Sir, the staff recommends that the council approve the ordinance requesting the rezoning. The applicant intends to convert the existing structure into a 1,700 uh, square foot professional office with eight on-site parking spaces upon the approval of the, of the rezoning. The parcel uh, currently has a future land use map designation of professional mixed use. The applicant has concurrently filed a, uh, an application for site plan approval, which we'll hear next. Um, the uh, professional business district uh, B1A permits offices for professional uh, purposes along with more than 17 other types, so we do recommend approval of this. Thank you, Chair. Um, questions from Council? Hearing none, I'll open the public hearing. Questions from the public? Anyone who'd like us to speak in support or in opposition? Hearing none. Oh, Tom, yes, Tom David, I'm here on behalf of the applicant. If you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any final questions from council? Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Roman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairgrove McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? No. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All right, tab 14, car number 689. Yes, tab 14 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval for an approximately 1,711 square foot professional office located at 190 Northwest 14th Street, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Okay, uh, move it. Second. Thank you. Staff? Sir, we recommend the Mayor and Council approve the proposed resolution requesting site plan approval. The site plan is consistent with the site plan criteria set forth in Section 3047 of the City Code. No variances are being sought. Again, we recommend approval. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Questions from Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Shelley. Just a quick question. The only question I had on the site plan was that because it's going in a, a primarily residential neighborhood, is there something there? I know in prior cases that we've had places that over here in this area that there's been something, some restriction that makes it 
continue to look like a residence? Did we make sure that's part of this? I believe that's the case. I believe that's the case, that we wanted to maintain the appearance right. of, so of, still, a, so it fits of a home. The it, so it fits the character of the neighborhood, of the neighborhood even though yes, it's now so is that, an office. Are you sure that's in there? Or we, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to confirm that with you, okay. but uh, it's my understanding that that's... I guess I'll, well, I'll ask the applicant. Do you guys have any problem with that restriction? I don't believe we have any problem, problem with the restriction. I think it is a, uh, it's a function of the, of the limitations you allow in the site plan process. Right, exactly. Right. But I just want to make sure that we're all clear here. Yeah, the, there seems to be some discussion. I just want to make I sure. Tell you, I can tell you that, the, that the, uh, the applicant's intent is to convert that building from a home. It'll look exactly the same after it's done. I mean, there's not, you're not going to be able to know, except that the city requires a completely different driveway configuration. Correct. Yeah, I saw the site plan, and it looks like a very nice site plan. It looks like you've got landscaping to buffer the parking That's area right. and things of that nature. I just want to make sure in case this applicant were to sell the property or pass the property on that there is some sort of restriction going forward that prevents somebody else from coming in and turning it into a, a clearly commercial facade. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that we somewhat address that going forward. If, if they, they're not allowed to change the building. It's got to stay in the same form as it is. They're allowed to change the landscaping and those types of things. But okay. essentially, it's got to be uh, what it is today. So okay. I, that, that's, I just want to make sure. It's the only protection. I want to make sure it was there. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Sean. Okay. Any final questions from council? Okay, I'll open the public hearing. Excuse me. Any questions from the public? Hearing none, seeing none. I'll close the public hearing. Final questions from council. Kind of clerk, clerk, roll. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Woolman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Chat 15, car number six. Thank you, Mayor Council, on behalf of uh, Mr. Dinabrega. Thank you. Tab 15 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval for an approximately 6,662 square foot retail commercial building located at 792 South Homestead Boulevard, as legally described in Exhibit A, and providing for an effective date. So I move it. Move it. Second. Staff. Sir, uh, this is um, our 711 site plan. Uh, we recommend that the uh, mayor and council approve the resolution for the site plan approval for this property. We've worked uh, with the applicant over the last month and uh, got got everything on this site plan cleaned up, so it looks good and it's ready to go. What did you just say? You said you recommend <laughs> approval? <laughs> as hard as that may be to do. <laughs> you said all the issues are cleared up? Don't push it. <laughs> all right. Feel free to serve slurping for that. <laughs> Oh, applicant, do you yeah. hear that? <laughs> We're happy to hear that. And for the record, Jeffrey Flanagan, on behalf of the applicant, um we appreciate the time, the month uh, that we were given to work with staff and glad that we were able to work and resolve all issues and make both sides happy. And that's what it's all about. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for, for spending that time. Okay, uh, no, any final questions? Um, question council? Okay, open the public hearing. Questions from the public? In favor or against? Okay, hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Final questions from council. Madam Clerk. Call Council the roll. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Okay, legislative matters. Yes. Um, tab six Mayor. Mayor. Sir. Sir. Excuse oh, me. I just wanted to say thank you, Mayor Bateman, council members, uh, Mr. Joe Cordino and his staff. Uh, we finally did it. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, sir, for hanging in there. Okay. Um, back to you. For, uh, thank you. Tab, tab 16 is the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances to provide for Division 3 zoning relief procedures of Article 2, Administration of Chapter 30 zoning, to provide for a procedure to address actions which may result in possible violations of federal or state laws in the implementation of the Code of Ordinances or its related rules, policies, and procedures. Repealing Section 30-476, Reasonable Accommodation Procedures of Division 4, Standards for Housing for Specific Occupancy of Article 4, Supplemental District Regulations of Chapter 30 Zoning, Providing for Severability, Inclusion in the Code, Conflicts, and Providing for an Effective Date. This is second and final reading. Okay. Move it. I'll move it. Second. Thank you, staff. We recommend that you all approve the proposed ordinance amending Chapter 30 
uh, like I said, this amendment really, um, this amends the code to institute broader zoning relief procedures. Uh, so therefore, if a claim is made, um, this provides uh, for a case-by-case -case review of the process uh, by which we can evaluate the claims, and then we can schedule for public hearing. So it, it just conforms uh, with, the, uh, with the, the, the most recent legal precedent. We recommend approval. Okay, thank you. All right, questions from council. Hearing none, I'll open the public hearing. Questions from the public on this? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any final questions from council? Madam Clerk? Councilwoman Fairclough from McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Walman? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Okay, we did 17, so tab 18. An ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the budget for several funds and departments of the city, fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2012, ending September 30, 2013, by increasing the total budget revenues and expenditures by $8,321,624, providing for repeal, severability, and an effective date. This is the first read. Okay, so am I moving on? Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, staff? Mayor and Council, this basically is an annual process by which we take the uh, purchase orders that are unliquidated at the end of the previous fiscal year and we roll them over into the current fiscal year's budget and it requires an amendment. Okay, thank you. I was saving my question. Questions from Council? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll open the public hearing question from the public. I do that move for the public. Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Final questions from Council. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilwoman Fairfield from McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Walman? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Okay, tab 19, car number 698. A resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending building, permit, and related services fee schedule, providing for application and permit fee for donation drop boxes and donation trailers, providing for enforcement, providing for an effective date. This is a companion item to the ordinance that you just passed. Okay, M moving on. Second. Second. Thank you, staff. We recommend uh, Mayor and Council approve the resolution, resolution amending the uh, building permit related fee sh schedule as it pertains to the application of permits for drop boxes and donation trailers. Essentially, we have a $25 annual fee with a renewal fee of $10. Okay. Thank you. Questions from Council? Okay, hearing none, I'll open the public hearing. Questions from the public? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Final questions from Council. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Tab 20, car 725. A resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving a request to vacate portions of 8th Street between Homestead Avenue and Northeast 2nd Road, 9th Street between North Flagler Avenue and Homestead Avenue, Homestead Avenue between Northeast 2nd Road and Northeast 6th Avenue, and certain alleyways located within blocks 24, 5, 6. 24, 25, 27, and 28 of the amended and extended map of Homestead and reserving to the city all rights over any needed public utility easements as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Somebody move it for me? Move it. Second. Uh -huh. Second. Thank, Thank you. you. Staff? Sir, we recommend approval of the roadway vacation for the power plant. Um, the uh, power plant needed to uh, vacate this um, roadway um, to uh, environmental issues. But they needed a replat. And so as a part of the replat, we needed to take care of some of the roadways that were underneath and, and make sure that everything was uh, the way it should be as existed on the ground. So we're recommending an approval. Okay, questions from council. Hearing none, uh, I'll open the public hearing. Questions from the public? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Final questions from council. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Yes. Councilwoman Wallman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough McCormick? Yes. Councilman Shelley? Yes. Mayor Bateman? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Business from City Manager.
I mean, we just want to congratulate the CRA. They had their first step of a two-step process. They had their uh, budget uh, approved at a committee at the uh, county commission. So we got a lot of nice uh, feedback from them. So that's uh, very good news. And uh, thank you for that. And we'll let you know as soon as it's uh, voted on. By the county commission, right? Correct. And the uh, second thing is uh, just to recognize uh, Julio Breda's uh, father-in-law passed away uh, last Sorry. night. So I just want to... Uh, let him know that uh, we're thinking about him sure. and his family, and uh, it was rather sudden and untold, so uh, they're going to go through what they have to go through, and uh, hopefully he'll be back soon. Mm -hmm. Condolences. All right, uh, City Attorney. Yeah, got a report. Okay, uh, Council Williams. Council yes. Williams. Thank you so much, yes, uh, Mayor. Uh, let me uh, uh, thank uh, Mayor Bateman and uh, my other colleague, um, Elvis martin for uh, showing up last night at the MLK Pioneer Induction Ceremony, uh, which was a uh, pretty good ceremony. Uh, we had over uh, almost 100 plus people there where we recognized those important persons that uh, have shared uh, uh, their sweat and equity and, and their contributions to this community and uh, it was a very great program. I uh, want to also highlight the, that we have in the MLK movie night uh, at Blakely Park that will start at 6 p.m. sharp uh, at the new renovated Blakely Park and then Friday night, um, I mean sorry, fr that's Friday night, Friday morning you'll have the uh, Martin Luther King breakfast uh, at 8 a.m. and um, and then Saturday at 12 noon, we will have the Martin Luther King Parade. So I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that so they can come out and be a part of this festive occasion. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So I do have a question for the manager um, as it relates to uh, where we are with the assistance um, and what have you done thus far. I know it's been 30 days, so I, I need to hadn't talked with you about it. So if you can give me an update on where we are from there. Sure, Councilman. We've uh, given this issue a lot of thought, as you can imagine, and uh, we have a meeting scheduled with your council assistants next week. We're going to do it this week, but they've been really tied up with the MLK breakfast, so uh, they requested that we meet with them next week. So that's pretty much the final piece to this, is just to better understand not only the, the functions that you do for individual council members, but also what are some of the more interdepartmental matters that they handle and try to work with them to see if we can figure out is there a better way to apportion those duties. And as soon as those meetings are concluded, I expect to have a recommendation for you. Okay. Now, how many, how many, how many persons are, do we actually have back there that is supporting the mayor and council when you say that? You have three uh, full-time people, uh, one temp, and then, uh, and that, that's it. So it'd be three full-time people and a tenant. Where are you now with what uh, was, I guess, uh, done uh, as relates to transfers over? In terms of? Internal transfers, people, uh, the persons. The request I had received from the council was to provide you with what that would cost uh, or and or how would we what would be done without any cost associated with the transfer. So, uh, and then the second piece was that uh, recommendation in terms of apportionment of duties, and uh, so we'll have all that for you after I meet with your uh, council staff. Wait, okay, so, so I'm sorry, back that up now. Say that again now because maybe I un misunderstood you. You're saying what? The, I thought I thought the direction was first part. What you said, I, I agree with, and then I thought. The other direction was um, that um, that you would come back to us um, with you're saying a cost if we're see if we can transfer persons over that wouldn't. It's it's an interesting point because as we talk to people, particularly staff, after the meeting, everybody had a different recollection of what happened. So what we did is we literally transcribed the entire meeting so that we could be exactly clear on what you asked for. And it boils down to this. The first one was to uh, find out what it would take to transfer a part-time employee uh, to, uh, to handle some of those duties to see what, if anything, that might cost. And if that could be done without any cost, and then the second thing was a recommendation as to, uh, regardless of whether it's 
three or four or five, a recommendation on how council duties would be apportioned to the staff members, and then also in the event that there is, you know, a, a appointments made and who would be designated to who uh, in the event of special events or any other type of major projects or in the absence of a particular designated sta a council staff person, what's the recommendation to deal with that kind of a situation? So uh, at the conclusion of our meetings next week, we should have the whole package for you. Okay, but so far you've not done any of that so far. You've not looked at it because I know when it came to the uh, first, you know, my original motion, uh, when I first brought it up, I mean, I had the finance, the finance person sent it out the next day. It was like right there with the numbers, and the next thing I know is in the paper. Uh, I, I don't see what the delay is. I mean, if finance could have gotten the numbers that quickly uh, from the direction, it's been almost 30 days from... Well, the, the truth of the matter is, because as we read through the transcripts of what the actual direction was, uh, costing out what a part-time uh, a part-time employee would be is a fairly easy exercise. Right. But then the final charge was, can you make the transfer with no cost? And so, before we make a recommendation as to how that would be achieved, we wanted to first better understand how to apportion some of the duties and understand. Uh, how the whole system would work because we were asked for a recommendation. So the answer to your question is we've had several meetings internally. We have a pretty good uh, sense of uh, uh, what the council asked for and at the conclusion of the meetings with council staff we will have a recommendation. Okay. All right. I don't want to beat a dead horse but um, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get how staff can be so uh, articulate and so, you know, fast with getting the memorandum out to us on how much it would cost. And then, as direction is given from last week, you know, nothing for me, I have not seen nothing. You're saying that because of the MLK and all of that, that you've not had a time, chance to talk to staffing, but that still has not hit the, the point of, of what information that council should be getting on what I figured what we have directed you all to do. Uh, the difference would, would be that on the first request, it was a function of uh, Carlos finding out exactly how much uh, staff costs uh, in existing. So that that's one question. But in terms of recommending how staff would be apportioned and how we would transfer a particular staff member to the council office without that costing, that's a little more of an art than it is a science. So when are you saying you're going to bring it to us? Uh, next week we'll be meeting with your staff and then hopefully by the end of the next week I'll have a memo for you. So, uh, so basically we have four people, right? Currently, including three in the town. I'm town bodies. Yes. Okay. So, uh, based on what Councilwoman Crackoff McCormick has recommended uh, as a transfer, however, part time, that will give us a five. Is that what we're saying? Because I'm trying to be clear now with the council. Would you, um, Councilwoman McCormick, give us more defined, clear what you have articulated? I'm confused by what the manager has told me so that, you know, that we make sure that we're on the same page. Because what I'm looking from from you, I've not gotten. I've gotten other responses as relates to the first one. Um, but it's been some time since that has happened. So if you don't mind yeah, just repeating. Yeah, just an abbreviated version. Yes, ma'am. Thank through the, you. You're welcome. Yes, please. I think we had a consensus that we would transfer someone from a different department to assist the mayor and council. That would bring the total to five, three full-time, one temp, and then the transfer with the understanding that the mayor would have, the office of the mayor would have his assistant and the other four bodies would work with the mayor and council delegated to work with a specific council, council person. Okay. All right. Mr. Williams? Yes, sure. Just, just, just so I can clarify, my understanding was that we were waiting for information to come back, that we hadn't made any official decision on that, that we had asked them to look into that because there was no debate at that meeting last week regarding one way or another. The direction was for the manager to come back with the information so that we could then have that debate. So I just want to make sure we're clear that I 
did not give specific direction to do that. I asked for or my direction, what I understood the direction was be was to have the manager bring that information back so I could I could then debate and discuss and make my decision. And and thank you for sharing that. And what I'm saying is prior to that, we had the information expediently on costs and all of that. And so I'm trying to figure out why is this information so slow for now? Uh, because time is of the essence. I think this issue is just as important as any other issue. Uh, and I don't know how much time uh, those individuals have back there. I don't know how much time, uh, Mr. Manager, that you would dedicate towards meeting with them an hour or however. Um, but let me tell you what my frustration is about this is, is that um, even with the Martin Luther King breakfast, um, Lourdes uh, has been working uh, I mean, we, we had a lot of stuff going on yesterday, and um, you know, I was, you know, trying to get stuff organized and, you know, talking to her back on the phone. And I tell you, she's just, you know, she's working, but, but you know, it's, it's a stressful environment as it is already. And um, I don't know the new temp, I know, not the temp, but the new person, uh, Heather, is that her name? Yes. She's not reached out to me. She's not said hello to me. She's not said anything to me. I don't know how, if the person works for mayor and council, if you're going to work for mayor and council, then it's to serve all of us. But now, if we are asking for, if that is the case, then I'm asking for my own assistant. Because I, what I see happening doesn't do a service for what I need. I, I'm looking that she serves other persons in their capacities and she's not reached out to me. I don't know about my other colleagues here, but I know she has not reached out to me. And if we're going to do bear counsel, uh, then it ought to be everybody. So it's a little frustrating when we hire somebody that is supposed to work for mayor counsel, but they're only working for certain individuals and have not reached out to the rest of us or to me personally and not say anything I can do to help. But for others, they're running back and forth, fixing food, whatever. But not once have that individual made any public declaration to say even hello. How is your day? Do you need anything? And so I'm starting to be offended, number one. And number two, I'm upset because of the process. Uh, I feel it's being delayed. And then if that is the case, I'm going to ask for my own assistant. And then the person that is working, they can have three. She can work with the three others. And I even have my own assistant. That way I know my work is getting taken care of. I know that everything is being done properly the way I like it to be done. So that's where my frustration is. And I think tonight, you know, I need a time limit. I need, I need a time span on when you're going to come back with that. You say you're going to meet with them, then when are you going to come back to council? The next meeting at the next cow, when is it going to happen? My, my intent is to have a memo to you by the end of next week, and then from there, uh, we'll hopefully have some dialogue with you all to see if you're comfortable with that. Some of it is structural, and some of it is may require council action. So uh, we have, we have uh, some out-of-the-box ideas that we just, again, before we propose anything to you, that we um, talk to the staff as well. And uh, I know this, this issue was decided on Tuesday, so we just before we came up with the recommendation, we wanted to make sure that we had a workable idea for you. And uh, I think everybody shares the same goal, which is to have a functional office, and we're hoping we can provide that for you. Yeah, because my personal opinion, George, is the office is divided. And if a new person is hired to work for Mayor Council, they'll have serve at the plate. They should serve us all equally. That is not is what's being done with the new person that has been hired back there. I'm just letting you know that um, because I've not I've, I've, I've not had a phone call from her. I've not she's passed me in the hall. She's not said a one mumbling word to me. And that to me, if you're working for mayor and council, you work for all of us. So if that is the case, then I I, I'm, I want my own assistance, and and that that way I don't have to work. She don't have to speak to me. She don't have to do anything for me. Then then. That would be, I can wash my hands of it, but until then, she needs to respect all of us and, and be equally able to serve all of us. But if that's the case, then I, I'm, I'm requesting at this time for my own assistant, and, that, and I'll be done with it. Then, then she can serve whoever she wants to, and we'll be fine with it. But as, as it currently now, she's, only, she's, not, she's not reached out to me at all. 
Just let me piggyback, and, and I want to, again, speak about the employees that are over there. What, what really concerns me and bothers me, and I, I'm too really shocked that you've taken as long as you've taken. I mean, there's no, there's no excuse for it, George. You work at the will of this council. Simple as that. And to take 30 days to do this, you wouldn't take 30 days to hire a new assistant. No, don't, no, don't speak. Let me finish. What we've done to these employees back there is we've worked them to a frazzle. We've worked them to tears. I've seen them cry. We've worked them to a point where they, they don't want to work anymore. They don't want to work in that department anymore. We've pushed them to the max. I said it 30 days ago. I'm going to reiterate it again. I've sat in my assistant's and Jimmy, Mr. Williams' assistant's office, where Carlos's office, finance is called over and said, I need X, Y, Z done to these bills, and I need them done today, and I need this done, and I need that done. And I look at her and go, why you? That was a centennial kickoff, the original centennial kickoff of when refreshments were added. No one else could handle it. It had to go to Lourdes. It had to go on her desk while she's working on the MLK, while I'm saying to her, did you return this to so-and-so? Did you get this done for so-and-so? We're pushing one and two people to the max in there. A couple people are working to the max. You need to step up. And if it's not you, Mr. Manager, HR needs to step up. And I mean tomorrow. Tomorrow. Because you're going to lose some good people. And then you're going to be scrambling to hire two more. Because you're not doing your job. You are not. And it's not against George Fletzis. It's you, the position. It could be Tom Smith sitting over there. 30 days was too long to move on this. You have five people, and I know I was corrected the last time I said it. You have five people that report to you every day. You have one five. You have five direct. Assistant manager, two assistant city managers. You have an assistant to the manager and two executive secretaries for one person. We're seven strong. I don't think you know what we all ask of them. But I'm telling you, we ask a lot. And we are breaking their backs. And I, it's no pun intended against finance. You're doing a great job, sir. All that extra paperwork and this document and tell me why this was spent here and that here, that's fine. But that's not for our staff people to be doing detailed stuff like that. We don't have enough staff in there to do it. And I ask, again, maybe you go back and ask why it had to be Lourdes. She didn't even go to the event. She didn't even staff the event. She didn't even work the event. But it gets put on her desk to tell me why this person hasn't been paid $600 in three months and give me written detail who authorized this. That's not her job. So back off and give the right people the right job because it's not happening. Stick your head in there and just look and watch. I sat in there for an hour the other day. I couldn't believe it. I was amazed. People knock on that door. They walk in that door. There's questions from counts, from staff. There's questions from the public. It's not fair what we're doing to them. It's not fair. And I guarantee you, any one of you department heads that had the same problem, you'd be here voicing your opinion. And we'd be hiring new people for you. Joe, how many people do you have in your department? Counting yourself and counting Kathy, who's there, how many people do you have in your department? Just a number. Twelve people in your department. Twelve. A year ago, we had five. A year and a half ago, we had two. It's not fair. That's not accurate. So you, you need to move quicker. You need to move quicker. I guess I have a question about how I'm supposed to react when you say 30 days over and over again when the direction was given on Tuesday. So in fairness, the direction was given on Tuesday, the agenda goes out on Friday. And sir, with all due respect, we're trying to fix a problem that has been going on for a long time, well before you all were here, a system that has worked this way for years and years and years. And for the first time, you asked for a recommendation as a group. And so we're trying to give you a recommendation that will work. And so I don't think it's unreasonable to, to sit with the staff, think the thing through carefully, and try to come up with something that will work. 
So that's that's really it. But the 30 days, we can say it over and over again, but it's not 30 days, and it's it, not fair to say 30 days. It was brought up one council meeting ago. But there was no direction. There was no direction. There, there was there was one specific direction 30 days ago, and then a council person Mayor. requested that the, the issue be re revisited. But we, and Mayor, and then direction Mayor, was given. Once again, let me just finish with it. I'm done. Regardless of whether it was 30, it was 30 days ago that we first did this. Wait, wait. Let me let me say. 30 days ago, you knew there was a significant problem there. Regardless whether you restaffed it or whether you sent some quick temporary help in there, you knew there was a major problem, sir, 30 days ago. I went through this same dog and pony show, which is the God's truth, and I'm telling the public, there was major problems 30 days ago. You didn't go in and do anything. You didn't even send HR and say, go investigate. Tell me what's going on. Get the feel of it. Feed, give me some feedback. Well, 30 days ago, the, the, the I can tell you Mr. Herklaus sat here and said to you, we have problems. We'll play it back for you. Mayor. Maybe Tuesday, yes, maybe. Tuesday, you got a reassignment. But 30 days ago, you knew you had some, your employees, you said. You knew you had problems in there. And we got our marching orders, and we were headed towards the budget. Uh, I, I give up. Direction. Yes, sir. Mayor, let me, just say, let, me, let me just say this, because uh, I brought up the 30-day issue, and the reason why I brought it up is because I know when we uh, voted on the issue and that it came before, uh, you know, I brought it up, and from then, the next day, or two days after, the next day, immediately there was a memorandum of how much it's going to cost us. It means the work had started immediately on what it would do. On dollars. On dollars, right. And then, um, you know, respectfully, my colleague asked for the item to be placed on the agenda. And then it looks like everything had a stop motion. Nothing progressed after the item was placed on the agenda or after you knew it was going to be placed on the agenda, uh, nothing progressed simply because I have no idea. But if the direction was given to you from us and it was a voted issue, you're supposed to bring back a budget amendment. The amendment did not come. The item was placed on there as a discussion item. And I see that nothing I think I, I saw the process just come to a halt simply because the item was placed back on the agenda. I don't know what, why it stopped, if it stopped, but I know actions did stop. I, I, didn't, I didn't see any more emails about it. I didn't see any more progression about it. I didn't see where we're, 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 we're doing interviews, come back to a budget amendment, nothing. After the item was placed on the agenda for discussion, uh, then I believe that the whole matter came to a, a, a halt. And I, I have a problem with that because if we've given you clear direction, whatever the, the issue is, if, it, if the motion came back up for reconsideration, but I thought the work should have continued to be done. I thought you should have still continued to do what needed to be done because right now you should already had, to me, uh, if you were working on the issue, you should have already had how much a part-time person would cost if you were working on a budget amendment from the original discussion. Just because the item was placed on the agenda, I felt that all actions had stopped. I didn't see any more progression, didn't see anything after that, after I saw it on the agenda. Or to your knowledge that it came before you prior to the agenda being published, you probably had foreknowledge that it was going to be placed on there, I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is, is that these things, I, I believe, should have been already in process after we have given you proper directions from a vote. You bring them back an amendment, you bring back a budget amendment to us. I thought all of that should have been worked out and that if we did, if the councilwoman re, uh, uh, reconsidered her vote, those things should have already been in place. And I just don't see what the lag time is behind it. And I, I'm just really kind of frustrated and puzzled by it. And so, you know, that's my, that's my whole frustration uh, with it because I just, don't, I just don't get it. I just don't understand uh, where we are with it and why you need another week or so to meet with the staff, knowing what the issues, but I understand the second part of what you're saying. So uh, hopefully uh, you gave me a time specific and I'll wait to hear back from what you come up with. But I'm not happy.
because I think that uh, that the issue has been gone on, you know, long enough. You know, so I'm I'm not too much happy about the process. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilman Maldonado. Um, yeah, I was uh, just speaking to the city manager earlier today and I wanted to address and I, you know, my discussion with him was basically somewhat of the same nature where, uh, which I know that he is working on, we did discuss that, you know, that is the process and he explained it to me. Um, you know, he made the, the point that, you know, with the MLK um, that's coming up and, you know, all hands on deck and so he, he's, he sees what's happening. Um, he's working on it now. I can understand what Councilman Williams is saying, which he's frustrated with um, procedurally. You know, 30 days ago, there should have been a process, and, and the process needs to be halted, um, which I understand the frustration. Uh, um, uh, you know, my frustration, and I, and I mentioned it to him today, was basically that, um, you know, the person that, it, that I work with presently um, um, seems to be more on the, on the end of the boat, the, uh, the totem pole, and, and her, uh, when she's come into this office and working with us, and what seems to happen is this, is this other, uh, um, other um, of our assistants are, are working on other projects. Uh, you know, my, my assistant seems to get uh, the rest of the workload, and hence my, my job is halted. And it's happened to me numerous times. You know, I, I've said in the past I wasn't, um, you know, uh, I wasn't. I was active um, in the past year, but under the circumstances, not as much. But as now, as everyone knows, you know, back on the saddle, moving forward. And and so my my I let him know today that I was frustrated in the sense that um, we need to get this resolved right away. I was originally always for having our own assistance because, you know, we are all experiencing the amount of work that's going on. And 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 so once. Uh, we start to get want to do our things, and, and, and our jobs get halted because you know work gets dumped into someone else's lap. Um, you know that's where you know our good work to our constituents, our residents, comes to halt. And so, but I know that the, the manager is working on it now, and it w was going to bring something uh, as soon as possible. So, um, but I, I just I, I understand my frustration has been going. I've seen this happening. I've been there, and I see this. The mayor is true in a sense. These. Uh, these uh, our assistants get work to the bone, and my heart, you know, I, I'm grateful for their hard work, and, and, and I applaud them because uh, I don't see any other department working as hard, and because they know that what we're doing is, is is affecting our community. So, but with that, you know, I'm okay with 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 the final timeline that he's bringing forward to, um, for us. Um, but again, I asked at the last time. I uh, considered uh, our uh, Councilwoman um, Fairclough uh, McCormick's. Um, a recommendation uh, only with discussion and hope that when you conclude your findings that we're going to uh, you know come with a, recomm a recommendation that if we do need an extra person or more persons that that will be put on the table not that you will adjust the workload of, you know to where uh, we're, we're you know um, uh, res keeping everyone happy you know I want you to make a decision to say we need more people or if, if what we have and you work out a good plan that that's brought forward that's all I'm asking for. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilwoman Wong. Thank you. Um, I'm very happy with what you're doing. I don't want you to make a, a rush to judgment decision and, 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 you know, to me I see this as a way of moving forward and take your time, research it, do what we need to do, interview the ladies, um, ask them questions, find out what their true workload is. And just for the record, and Mr. Maldonado, Mr. Maldonado can verify this, there was a point in time when I said to him, who's that lady back there? Do you remember that? And that lady had been a school here for almost seven months, and I had never met that person. That person had never said hello to me. I knew nothing. So just, just for the record, and you know I did that. Mm -hmm. I said, who, who is that back there? Mm -hmm. And he told me who it was. So I'm hoping that the recommendation will come forward that um, um, Mr. Maldonado, oh, excuse me, well, you want to be in charge? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Gretzis <laughs> and um, HR will take over that office, do some training, teach, supervise, guide it, 
because I think that's what's missing. There's, there's just supervision. And I know Mr. Goetzis is more than willing to do that. Uh, we may not be happy when he does it, but I'm, I'm going to be happy because that's the way it's going, that's the way I think it should be. Um, I put it on the record last time that um, what's fair for one should be fair for all. And um, although I do, I did tell you, Mr. Mayor, that I felt that you did need an assistant. But I think the rest of us that, you know, we need to hunker down and do what we have to do and wait till the new budget um, time comes around and then make changes if we have to. But with all that being said, I'm going to move on. Good job, Mr. Manager. And uh, I'm very excited. I think the changes are going to be, um, it's going to be a turn. You know, we're going to see different. Because when you're supervised, and things are done in a proper manner, you're going to see more production. Now, I have some sad news. Um, <clears throat> I was just <clears throat> emailed, and um, Charles LaPrade, who used to be with the city for years and years and years, his father passed away this week. And the visitation is uh, Friday night at 6 at Branham, and uh, the services um, are Saturday morning at 10.30. And, um, um, his dad, John, was well renowned, renowned here in the uh, community, worked with the agricultural industry for years and years, and Charles was a beloved employee of the city, and so I just wanted to send my condolences. Um, I'd also like to introduce Pedro, and Pedro, I'm going to mess your name up, so Ronaldo's. Hey, I got it right for a change. <laughs> Pedro is Dennis's new assistant, and um, he's got a lot of... Uh, His new assistant. Uh, you know, that's not necessary. That position has been open for a very long time, and I'd just like to thank you, uh, Pedro, for coming into the um, city. He was well recommended by Day County, and um, we think we need a clarification on the definition of assistant and administrative assistant. I think there's a clear, clear misunderstanding on what an assistant does and what an administrative assistant does. So I'll just say that on the record. Um, I'd also like to say that um, I am going to be having the Bicycle Festival uh, in March and then in April um, I'm assisting the girls of SOS with the uh, gala and it's I'm really excited about it. That's going to be in April. And then we'll have our 4th of July. But I promise, I made a promise. I um, happened to be in Marshalls over at uh, um, US 1 and 8th Street over the holidays. And I was in line, and the girls came up to me, and they go, you know, they were so excited because they recognized, uh, they, they watched the television uh, channel. So they asked me to give them a shout out. So I've never done this before. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're advertising. <laughs> no, I'm not. But this is the Marshall's 816 store. And shout out to <laughs> Christine Saganka, store manager Shamilia, and Anel. So happy new year. They were so sweet. They had so many nice things to say about our city and our council. And um, everybody in the line was, you know, we watch that show. We watch that show. So, so keep in mind, they do, people do watch that show. Oh, yeah. So with that being said, well, thank I, you, Mayor, and Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Councilwoman Chair Claus McCormick. Thank you, Mayor. Councilwoman, was that the Homestead store yeah. right here? Because I was in there, and this little girl kept following me. <laughs> and I looked back, and her dad was like, yes, that's her. That's the Councilwoman. <laughs> like, she was starstruck, and I have on my jeans and my T-shirts and my sneakers. And she was just super excited. <laughs> okay, moving on. I'm excited to report that I have an intern starting, Mrs. City Manager. I met with her on Sunday. She's a Homestead resident, attended our local schools. She has a double major at FIU in political science and public administration. So she's very excited about working with us. She's a minority, a Haitian American female, and I'm excited about bringing her on board. I'll be introducing her to the community at our next council meeting. Also, I would like to share very broadly that I had a one-to-one -one meeting with the Lieutenant Governor about a week ago, Lieutenant Jennifer Carroll and Coral Gables. It was a long-standing commitment, a meeting I had with her, and I was able to fulfill it with the assistance of our lobbyists. And she spoke very favorably about the city. She knew more about the city than I thought she did. I was like, wow, she did her homework. She spoke very favorably about the city and our relationship with the Homestead Air Reserve Base. 
Being that she is a naval, Navy veteran, she has a vested and personal interest in the city of Homestead and the Homestead Air Reserve Base, and she wants to communicate with us regularly with the governor to ensure that the wishes of the city council is addressed in Tallahassee. Um, I think that's a great resource for us to have, and I'm more than happy to continue the dialogue with her. I invited her to come to the city, and she'll be coming down to give a tour. And I hope that my colleagues can join me in, in welcoming the Lieutenant Governor to the City of Homestead. Also, I would like to thank in advance the members of the SWAC and CRB and under the leadership of Councilman Williams for all of their hard work with the MLK breakfast this Friday. Unfortunately, I will not be able to attend this year due to circumstances beyond my control, but I know it's going to go well. And I thank all of those members for their hard work. And then on Monday, remember, it's a day on and not a day off. Dr. Martin Luther King was a social justice crusader who worked very hard for all of humanity in his social service uh, efforts. And I would like to encourage and empower the members of our community to get involved in the community just as Dr. King did in his era. All of us have to be social change agents. So I implore all of you to spend Monday doing something good for the city of Homestead. And I believe that's it. Thank you. Councilman Shelley. Thank you, Mayor. I just have two items. The first is to announce I'm going to be holding a uh, Northwest Area Cleanup event on February 9th at, from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock at the uh, William Dickinson Community Center in the Northwest. The concept is to get volunteers together to go out there and to clean up the neighborhood to make it a more beautiful uh, area. And I invite my fellow council members and mayor to attend. You're more than welcome to come out and help lift a hand and pick up some paper and cheer on the volunteers and, and help beautify the, the Northwest. The second item is I attended the Everglades Coalition Conference this past weekend, and in addition to learning about um, you know, Everglades restoration, preservation, and conservation, one of the things I did learn about in some of the statistics that I got was the big economic impact that ecotourism has in surrounding communities. And that deals with you know, fishing, photography, um, camping, bird watchers, the whole nine yards. And you know, one of the things the city of Homestead has is its unique location between Biscayne National Park and Everglades National Park. And so one of the concepts that was actually brought up by uh, one of the local organizations was to kind of brand the city of Homestead related to our National Park Service. You have Florida, um, Florida City, which is kind of the gateway to the Keys. That's kind of how they branded themselves. And so one of the concepts was this idea to capitalize on the, the ecotourism, the money and the dollars that go along with it, to maybe name ourselves or brand ourselves as a gateway to South Florida's National Parks. So that any time someone thinks about Everglades National Park or Biscay National Park, you know, City of Homestead comes to mind and they're going to want to stay here, eat here, and visit here. And so we kind of, when you have a Google search, City of Homestead will be attached to those parks as well. So it's a seed that I wanted to plant tonight as a concept going forward that maybe, you know, we're trying to attract economic uh, dollars here to our city. And although we're working on other aspects, these visitors and these tourists are coming through our city every single day, every single week, every single month. And so we have the, the supply, we just need to build the demand. And so it's something, again, I'd just like to plant the seed tonight to maybe work toward and brain ourselves and try to capitalize on, on capturing those ecotourism dollars. So thank you. I have an appointment um, to the uh, Miami-Dade uh, League of Cities. Uh, and that appointment would be uh, Elvis Maldonado. Uh, they've been uh, contacting me several times to make this motion, to make this move. So I need a motion, or I need someone to move, move on. It. Thank you, second. Okay, questions or comments? Do you accept, sir? Please give us a speech. Yes, Mayor, I do accept. Uh, as you know, um, I, I, as well as a few other council members here have been involved with the Miami Day League of Cities, and uh, I, I uh, appreciate the, the nomination again. I've, I've attended almost all the, the events and make sure that um, the city of Homestead is well represented. So. Uh, I will continue to bring the good news and uh, all the good fortunes from uh, Miami-Dade County and above uh, down to our, our big city, not little city, big city. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Nays? Okay, item carries. And secondly, um, for the viewing audience, um, apparently this is our new brochure for the city of Homestead. I picked this up downtown, so maybe you can tell us a little something about it. Is there someone here who recently produced this? Or if they do. Cheers. Did a good job. Can you tell us a little something? Hi. 
Um, we just started distributing this. Um, basically, what the idea was to have a general brochure about the city of Homestead that would talk about um, economic opportunities for businesses as well as um, incentives or opportunities for families that would like to move in here. We talk about education, our parks, um, our history, our um, you know, town and our events that we have, and it's an all-purpose brochure. We just send one box to the airbase, to the visitor center, to the chamber of commerce, to Miami-Dade College, to Dade Medical College. So I've just been sending a box to each of these places. So whenever they're recruiting people, students, or inviting new people to come to our city, they have something to you know show and talk about our city. Well, kudos uh, if you took that upon yourself. That is, it's a beautiful piece, and I have to walk into a, a, a retail operation downtown. And I looked at it, whoa, picked it up. And I just left um, many copies on each of your mailboxes, and I spoke with uh, the council assistants to let them know that whenever you're going to a conference or whenever you need something to back up, I have boxes here. They have access to the boxes, so you can grab as many as you need. I'd like to take a few downtown to my NPO meeting, pass them around. Very, very, very beautiful. May I? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I just, I, I think it's uh, great too. But I, I just got one question, and uh, I think as elected officials, we're kind of the face of the city. And my question is, is there a reason why the elected officials are not a part of this brochure, or you know, some type of greeting, maybe from the mayor, or something? Well. Okay. What, what is the rationale behind that? Because as a legislative body, we are typically the face of the city. And uh, that, that's my only issue or concern with this. And then, you know, just to see what your rationale was behind that uh, in, you know, creating this. Well, the idea was to upgrade the brochure. When I got here, there was some brochure that was done by whoever was here before, it was a green brochure yeah, right. that had a lot of outdated information. And that one did not include the elected body, so the idea was just to do an upgrade. And I asked, you know, we just upgraded the information based on something that already existed. Um, I guess also, you know, we wanted to print a lot and just have enough for next year or, you know, we just upgraded it, and it was like that before. So how much did this cost us? Um, I can get you the numbers. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. We printed a total of 5,000 copies, and um, I can get you the numbers for the design and for the printing. Okay. We, we definitely got quotes for, for the whole entire project, and we went with the best quotes. Did uh, somebody from Homestead print this, or did we go out? No, it wasn't somebody from Homestead, but we, we did ask all the local vendors and we, we got some quotes back and, and we couldn't go for some, with someone from Homestead. But we did, we were having a few projects out and we did, one, one of the companies did make it for another project. We just went to procurement and, and nobody from the city could make it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Maldonado, you have another question? Um, yeah, Mayor, uh, in my discussion with the other issue, I kind of uh, wanted to speak about, uh, mention a few other things and sure. just take a moment. Um, I was reflecting on what, what, um, what Councilman um, Perkhoff McCormick just mentioned and, and with the Martin Luther King. Um, and I just wanted to share my experience yesterday, somewhat of yesterday, over at uh, when we were seeing the induction of the pioneers um, of, 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 uh, and, and um, over at the Pike Williams Center. Let me tell you, I, I could not stop smiling and laughing the whole time. And it was such a joy to see how uh, uh, the, our community was just uh, excited about, you know, being in Homestead and the history of Homestead and what they've done. Um, I, I, I um, you know, it just it brought me to another level of respect uh, for uh, the community. And, uh, and, and how they were involved and how they made a difference in each other's life. And, and, and um, you know, I always want to try to get involved and, and I always want to try to do something. And um, afterwards, you know, they, they, they uh, let us, uh, they invited us to walk into the room where the pictures of, of all the pioneers in the Southwest area. Um, and it was an impressive wall. 
and 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 a, and a bust in my heart. So um, they were going to bring some recommendations to the city in the, in the near future, from what I heard. Heard and, and and I would like to support that. But what I would like to do, I mean, if, as everyone knows, my my profession is in IT, and I do some web development. And and just a thought that I wanted to share with this council and this community is that um, why not share that with the rest of the world? And so, uh, with my staff, we're going to be working on a website, if it's possible, um, you know, to to have the pictures and the stories of everyone that is in that room so that we could share, so that others can, can share and experience what I experienced yesterday uh, in, in the Southwest community. So um, that's going to be my gift uh, to them and, and, uh, and the recognition of this, of this week and, 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 and the memorial of uh, our Mar uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and, uh, and his, his, as his dream lives on and our, and our hearts in this community, that's, that's kind of my gift to them. So I wanted to bring that and just kind of mention this. So I, I know I, I, got a, I forgot about it in the discussion of everything, but um, as I sat here and just thought about it, um, Council William, good job over there. Um, and the Brown family, um, kudos to them. What a great family. Um, they are committed uh, to the community and, and, and keeping the dream alive. So um, I, I can't wait to, to continue the, the, the festivities as I see it and the, and the recognition of, of, uh, of a legend. And um, so that's that part. The other part was I just wanted to remind the community that uh, the last Thursday of the month we have our education committee meeting. Uh, Dr. Martinez, which is our regional superintendent, will be joining us as well as representatives from uh, uh, Dr. Larry Feldman's office. And so we invite the community and all those involved in education to please join us. There are a lot of great things happening in the Homestead as this committee, uh, I'm, I'm the liaison, but this committee is, is dedicated to make a difference in education for the city of Homestead. Uh, public, private, and charter. There's some great things that are happening. There's some great things that I'm working on. Um, the next council meeting, I'll bring some great news that's happening. So that's it for me. Oh, thank, thank you for you. giving me another opportunity. No, no problem. It, it, was, it was extremely touching. I was going to close with that, and kudos to you. Um, the testimonies that were given last night of those pioneers were, were incredible, breathtaking. Uh, we not only smiled, we had tears in our eyes, both yeah. of us, as grown men. It was incredibly just uh, just overwhelming uh, the, the the teachers the nurses that were there that uh, everyone seemed to know one of my former teachers were there uh, uh, being uh, honored it, it was it was overwhelming and uh, kudos to you great job and it was well over a hundred uh, 120 130 people uh, participated showed up last night and, and kudos to the Brown family they did a great job and you know so many beautiful, beautiful comments made um, and, and so many beautiful words uh, that Dr. King, um, you know, used in his time and, you know, the, the best comment I, I think I heard all night, let's, let's, not, let's not just talk about Dr. King in the past or the present, but the future too. I mean, just wonderful things said one after another and so fitting for those pioneers was you know, let us take that first step of faith. We need not see the whole staircase, but let us take that first step. Just one beautiful phrase after another. So kudos yeah. to you. Did yeah. a great job. And Mayor, they, uh, I tell you, the, the event last night uh, was, was very well attended. But then as they spoke, they also had passion about passion. homestead, uh, yeah. and that, that, that was a sense of pride yeah, and passion. commitment to our city. And, how much they brag about the growth of and how proud they are to be from Homestead. And I think, you know, uh, that is to be uh, illuminated. And so that's, you know, I'm, I was glad that the event took place and great. So I look forward to bigger and better things next year. Okay. Thank you all for your support. Do you want to give a shout out on the address for the, for the parade? Oh, I don't know that one. I don't either, it's, where it starts. It's on the website. It's on the website? Yeah. It's on the website, okay. okay. So you can go to the city of Homestead uh, dot com and yeah. um, and look for the uh, uh, for the address for the uh, Martin Luther King parade on Saturday, uh, as well as the Martin Luther King breakfast tomorrow uh, tomorrow Friday 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 morning Friday morning uh, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Okay. With that said, uh, motion to adjourn. Move it. <laughs> <laughs>